An early pregnancy can be a fun and exciting time, but if an ovarian cyst is seen on that first ultrasound, too often I see patients worried or concerned about this. So let's go over it. Welcome back to another episode in the ovarian cyst series. If you haven't seen the other episodes, go back, look at these and check them out. In this episode, we'll be concentrating on ovarian cysts in pregnancy. Here at the New School OBGYN, it matters where you get your information. With that being said, my name is Eric Schmidt. I'm a board certified OBGYN and a minimally invasive gynecologic surgeon. Let's talk about ovarian cysts in pregnancy. Common questions that we get about ovarian cysts in pregnancy would be, well, how is this gonna affect my growing baby? What are the pregnancy related symptoms that someone might have with an ovarian cyst in their pregnancy? And also, do I have to worry about this cyst as far as my own health? Let's briefly touch on some physiology regarding the ovaries and that early pregnancy. Because more often than not, if somebody has a first trimester ultrasound and they look at the ovaries, you're going to see a cyst on one of the ovaries. Now it's going to be a smaller cyst, probably two to three centimeters in size. This is called the corpus luteum. This is a cyst that where it's from where the ovulation happened and the cyst forms and secretes hormones to help support that pregnancy through those very delicate first weeks of the pregnancy. Once the baby's placenta forms and takes over that responsibility, this cyst will generally go away and is absolutely nothing to worry about. So for the rest of the episode, we're mainly gonna be talking about cysts that are beyond the first trimester, cysts that are larger or suspected dermoid type cysts or endometrioma type cysts, um, or mainly simple appearing cysts. So we'll be talking about when we refer to cysts in this episode, we'll mainly be talking about those. Let's go over that first question. How is this ovarian cyst on mom going to affect the developing baby? And really, you can rest assured that it really won't. That would be an extremely rare scenario. Some of the most common symptoms if someone has an ovarian cyst in their pregnancy, well, first off, most people don't. So these are usually asymptomatic or without symptoms. But since we're doing so many more ultrasounds at this point in this person's life, maybe their first one ever, that's how we usually detect them. But if someone does have symptoms, that might be pain or pressure. With that cyst, it does have mass. And with a developing pregnancy, that further mass can push on surrounding structures, causing potential signs or symptoms of an ovarian cyst. We talked about ovarian torsion as one of the most severe pains that someone can experience with an ovarian cyst. If you wanna learn more about that, check out the previous episode. But an ovarian torsion in pregnancy can also happen. This luckily only happens about 5% of the time with ovarian cysts in pregnancy. And often it matters on the size of, of the ovarian cyst. The ovarian cyst, if it's smaller, generally those cysts don't tors, so you don't have to worry about it there. This would be give or take less than six centimeters. However, if the cyst is larger, it might not even twist because it's so big. So it's a cyst that we say are generally around six to eight centimeters in size. We worry about have a little bit increased risk of ovarian torsion and potentially causing some consequences in that pregnancy. Some more rare but potentially hypothetical situations would be potential ovarian cyst rupture or potential um, obstruction of someone trying to undergo vaginal delivery. If that cyst is sitting within the deep pelvis, potentially obstructing baby from sitting in a head down position or potentially the head coming down during a labor. When we evaluate ovarian cysts in pregnant women, just as if someone isn't pregnant, we always wanna evaluate, do we have a high or low concern of this cyst becoming cancerous? A lot of the cancers of the ovary don't happen in reproductive age women, and so this chance is extremely low. But we still look at the different things, such as imaging, and if it, imaging is suspicious on ultrasound of, hey, could this be a potential suspicious cyst? We might get additional imaging. This might be with MRI, or we might get blood tests. Those are the called the tumor markers. And so to further, differentiate, could this cyst be worrisome or not? So now that we've identified an ovarian cyst, we have to choose whether or not we want to intervene. And there's a few factors that might play into that decision. Just like in the previous episode, we talked about how for a number of the ovarian cysts, we often choose observation and don't jump towards surgery. The same goes for pregnancy with usually even a higher threshold for choosing the surgery option. Some of the deciding factors that might go into whether or not we choose a surgery in pregnancy would be, again, is this cyst suspicious for anything like malignancy? But more commonly, is that person symptomatic from the ovarian cyst? And how bad are the symptoms and do they warrant surgery? Often if ovarian cyst is larger, there might be a higher likelihood that it might cause symptoms 
or something like a torsion. And so someone could elect to have that surgery to potentially avoid those rare circumstances. So now let's assume that one of these factors is true and we're heading towards potential surgery in somebody that's pregnant for an ovarian cyst. There's usually a, a time slot within the pregnancy that we really wanna be doing the surgery. The first trimester, it's a delicate time. We really wanna avoid during the uh, organogenesis of baby or the organs are all developing and growing, we wanna avoid any really unnecessary medications or anything that might put that pregnancy at a little higher risk for miscarriage. Now we certainly can do surgery in somebody's first trimester, but again, due to this delicate time, we really wanna to try to avoid doing surgery in that first trimester. Now, as somebody is further along in the pregnancy, let's say third trimester, it becomes even more difficult to do a minimally invasive option because if somebody uh, through their abdomen uh, only has so much space if they're pregnant, we need um, the space to inflate the abdomen and also put our little trocars to try and get and see this ovarian cyst. And if somebody's uterus is too big, it might block that approach. And so if somebody is in their third trimester needing surgery, whether it's an ovarian cyst or an appendix or something like that, um, it, there's a higher chance that it could be with a larger cut incision. Also in the third trimester, the stress of surgery can produce sometimes preterm contractions, which sometimes can lead to preterm labor. So we do want to try to avoid that if possible. Now I do want to try to answer some questions too in regards to before the pregnancy, if somebody has an ovarian cyst. Now let's talk a little bit about before pregnancy because there are people out there that maybe chose observation that have an ovarian cyst. Well, now they're looking to get pregnant. So let's pull in some of that information we talked about in the previous episode to help us through some of these decisions. Now, it would be a reasonable option if somebody had a dermoid cyst, let's say five centimeters, and they chose just to wait and watch and not undergo surgery previously. Well, now they're considering pregnancy. And so after a counseling session and a joint decision, we maybe might decide that in, instead of potentially risking that ovarian torsion during the pregnancy, they may opt for surgery before the pregnancy to eliminate that potential risk. But also it's very reasonable to say, let's continue to watch the pregnancy with this dermoid cyst. Lastly, I just wanted to touch briefly on a question that I sometimes get from patients in that someone, maybe a provider in the past told them they couldn't get pregnant because they had an ovarian cyst, or maybe it was a little bit misinterpreted but I'm guessing what they assumed is that they have polycystic ovarian syndrome and so the ovaries have lots of little cysts on it. And so these aren't gonna prevent somebody from getting pregnant, but it's just a downstream effect showing that ovulation hasn't been happening on the ovary, but not these cysts on the ovary aren't necessarily going to prevent pregnancy from happening. Let's summarize all of this because it's extremely common to have that corpus luteum type cyst on your early ultrasound and that's gonna go away. But when it comes to those cysts that are larger and appear benign, it's also perfectly reasonable to watch these cysts and not intervene with surgery. But if any of the situations that we talked about come up and we lean more towards surgery, it can be done safely in pregnancy. And hopefully it can be done in a minimally invasive approach. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us for this episode. In the next episode, we'll talk about prevention of ovarian cysts. So stick around. If you haven't already and you learned something in this episode, do us the kind gesture of going ahead and liking the video, subscribing. We enjoy having you. We enjoy all those comments. Thank you again. Also in the third trimester, we want to start to worry about, well, are we going to provoke preterm correction? <laughs>